After being diagnosed with cancer, our guest has a near-death experience with Jesus that would also foretell of things to come on this part one of two installment of Spirit Answers Podcast. Well, Elizabeth, thank you so much for joining us on Spirit Answers Podcast. Thank you for having me. It's, yeah, it's, it's my pleasure. Thank you. Uh, so you have an absolutely incredible near-death experience where you had the opportunity to meet Jesus, and he gave you a very important message, um, and we're going to share that today. But before we get to that, I understand that your story really starts off with a cancer diagnosis. So mm -hmm. Can you explain how it all began? Uh, well, I just have to go back just a little bit. Um, it was a year after I submitted my entire being, my soul, my everything. I just surrendered to God. And that was Mother's Day morning, 2003, when, um, when I just had enough. And that, my, that testimony is just amazing because God's amazing. But um, Mother's Day morning, 2003, was when I was uh, just truly converted. And a year to the day, I was diagnosed with cancer. Wow. Um, yeah. And so I know that the enemy wanted me out and I know that he definitely, the Lord has, this is more than, more than words. He has a purpose and a plan for us. And, um, so they're more than just words on a page. And so I knew that the devil was wanting me out. And mm -hmm. so being diagnosed with the cancer, it was, uh, very radical. Um, I was stage four. And so I had to immediately be uh, zapped with a very, very high dose of chemotherapy. It's called, uh, they actually call it the red devil. And um, so with that, I'd gotten very sick and I went through a lot of um, uh, physical ailments. And one of them being that when they had first initially put the chemotherapy in my arm, um, they missed the vein and my arm atrophied. And so that's what led me onto the operating table. It wasn't the, uh, the breast, uh, the cancer diagnosis and the mastectomy. It was actually my arm needing to have work done on it. But I knew before that, uh, that something miraculous was going to happen with that operation. Um, I prayed for healing and God gave me healing. Uh, yeah, I was on the operating table and yes, they, God used surgeons to do it, but he's God and he can do it any way he wants. Right. Absolutely. So February 9th um, of 2006, I went in, I'm looking at my paperwork here because there's so many dates. Um, I just want to stay on top of it because there was another experience too, that you wanted to talk about. Sure. But uh, when, when that happened, I wondered, you know, what, what was I going to do with all of this anyway? So God, he makes, he makes a plan. And that plan is, he says, he seals it up and he gives us the appointed time to release it. And so we never want to go before God. So even if it was, it was in 2006, there's times that I've shared. So I shared my testimony with a few people and uh, Tony Cortez of a minute to midnight. And that's where you had heard first, um, my testimony or the Lord's testimony. And so um, there's two experiences, uh, one where I saw the Lord and I was in the light. And the second, another operation where I was in darkness. And so I believe that both stories um, and experiences, I know they're true and I have to share both. And um, so you know, you listen. So I'm going to let you ask the questions. If you, so yeah. what would you like me to elaborate on? So, yeah, thank you for giving us, mm -hmm. uh, uh, setting the stage for us. Um, so at this point, then you have the diagnosis, you're about ready to go under. Can you explain mm -hmm. what happens then during that first, before that first encounter? Okay. Well, um, before I had gone under, I prayed and I actually prayed with, all of the doctors and the nurses, and uh, I was ready. And when I went under, I was immediately taken. Uh, and 
I have to explain to people that um, this is huge, you know, to, to share that our, help me Lord. Um, we are able, God is able to do above and beyond, but he made us magnificently and we are fearfully and wonderfully made. His word says so. So he, he wants to have a relationship with us. And when I had, tra when I went from, from my body in the spirit with, and I stood before the Lord and he stood before me and, um, I was in a, def a different body and I was wow. in my glorified body. And wow. so I knew from the time I left my body that every, I didn't feel it. I didn't feel my body anymore. There was no pain there because prior to, as I was laying there, I hate needles, hate needles. I don't, I don't know anybody who would like them, but I hate them. And I started to feel a little like I, I got to get out of here. And immediately peace came over me and I literally felt myself go. And wow. as I, as I went, I was instantly in light. And so that's, um, that's the amazing thing is I didn't, I didn't even know. Oh, I know what I know, did want to share. I wanted to share about dreams. Okay. You know, when you have a dream, you know that you had a dream. Oh yeah. Uh-huh. So you go, that was a dream. You wake up and right. you go, that was, that was a wild dream. Right. Um, and a lot of people say, oh, you, you know, you had anesthesia and yada, 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 medication. Right. I, uh, I knew that I had, I was with Jesus. So when I woke up, I was like, I was with Jesus. I was with Jesus. When you wake up from a heavy dose of uh, anesthesia, you don't wake up saying I'm Jesus. It doesn't, you know, I was with Jesus, excuse me. Mm -hmm. I was with Jesus. You wake. You don't wake up saying anything. You just, right. You're groggy. You're out of it. And I woke up. And when I woke up, uh, I had a word for the anesthesiologist. And so, sometime later, probably about two months later, I actually asked for the anesthesiologist if I could talk to him, and they made a uh, way that I could. And he'd remembered everything that I that the Lord had told him through me. And he said, I believe, he said, I, I definitely believe. So I know through that experience as well, that those that were in the room, including my husband were not only did I have an experience, but they had an experience too. So dreams don't change people. Jesus mm -hmm. changes people. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. And, and I think it's really telling that that was your first inclination was to mm -hmm. give a word, uh, to the, to the, uh, Anesthesi anesthesiologist, if I can say that word. <laughs> um, so yeah, I think that's really, I think that's, that is very telling because, um, your, your first inclination was to, to share truth. Um, mm -hmm. so that's, I think that's one thing right there. And then another thing, which it kind of lends or leads to the next question I have for you, which is, I want to ask you what it was like to be in, in, in the presence of God, but from, from, what I already know, just having listened to uh, the the interview that you've done prior, is that um, it, it really it was unlike anything that you th th that you can really experience in this world. And I've heard that so many times from people that I've talked to that have had near death experiences. The experience is really almost more lifelike than being uh, on Earth. And from what you from what I've heard already, it sounds very similar to that. And then it, it just makes me think too, like I've had my own. One time in my life, I've had an I've heard an audible voice while praying, uh, which I believe to be Jesus. Uh, it had to do with this podcast or in this podcast, and I immediately knew, I immediately mm -hmm. knew that was not my voice. I just knew, I mean, that was that was not me talking to myself in my mind. I heard an audible voice, so I would imagine for you it was very similar. You just mm -hmm. knew what you experienced to be true. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, yeah, more real than anything that we could even encounter here. I and mean, if you were to multiply every beautiful thing on earth, it's still not enough. You know, yeah. There's so much of his majesty everywhere to compare God or that experience, uh, Jesus to anything on this earth. Cause you did have that question. Um, probably childbirth or, you know, to see a child for the first time. Wow. To see, wow. to see your own 
for the first time, that, that uh, moment of awe and wonder. Yeah. So when you, when you were experiencing that moment of awe and wonder, what, what, what did you see? What did you feel? Well, uh, immediately I knew that I was in the presence of the Lord. I mean, immediately. And I wanted to drop to my knees. Uh, I couldn't speak. He's, when he speaks, he speaks not audibly. Uh, he speaks to your spirit, spirit to spirit. And I have heard him audibly. Uh, as you said, you knew that you heard the Lord's voice. Uh, but in this experience, there was no need for that. It was spirit to spirit. Mm -hmm. And that's, um, that's something that he showed me too. When we do worship, we worship in spirit and in truth. And that's, uh, it's not by many words, but it's from our spirit to his spirit. So that being said, uh, he spoke to me. And when I saw him, I don't want to get too emotional. I, it's very hard to talk about without just being there. And um, I think a lot of people have said that, that you've shared, that have shared their testimony. He is beautiful. And he is so beautiful. Uh, so I was standing in light. Um, as I, as I look up right now, I can look out my window and I can see I, I live in Evergreen State. And for most of you that don't know, it's Washington State and it's beautiful here. And it's a nice day today, so I can look out the window. So if you see me looking above, you see me looking at his creation right now. Mm. Okay, so um, when, I, when I looked at him, I looked at him he, from, from where his feet would be all the way up to where his face shined like the sun was as tall as any tree I've ever seen. My husband has taken me to the ancient growth that we have here. There's a red, the, uh, the rainforest, but there's also old patriotic, uh, the patriotic forest or patriot forest. And um, the patriot, patriarchs. Yeah, you had a word that you couldn't do earlier. Yeah, so no, now I have one. And I have um, a lot more experience than you, so it's okay. <laughs> so uh, the tree was just huge, huge. Uh, so Jesus is bigger than anything. I mean, just he's like the, an old growth tree. And so he was, oh, sorry, he was huge. And I looked up, I went from his feet, where his feet would be, all the way up, and just kept looking up and up. And then there was his, his face just shining like the sun. Mm. And I, I couldn't speak. I was in awe. And he, he spoke my name. He said, Elizabeth, I, I have something to tell you. And I said, yeah, in my spirit, yes, yes, yes. And three times I just said yes. And he said, that, uh, you know, what, what it's going to take. He spoke to my spirit. This is going to be, it's very serious. And he said, yes, Lord. And um, he, he told me to come back and tell them that, that he loves them. And in me, I said, who, Lord? And he said, his children, his people, and his children, his people, and his church. And in, in one of those, he has a message. In one of his children, his church and his people and I said yes Lord and as he spoke to me I knew how serious it was that there was going to be a time that I was going to have to share and through the time from the time that I had this experience to today there's some things some some people aren't going to want to hear and I said they'll mock me and he said they mocked me first he said, they'll never believe me. They'll never believe me. And he said that they didn't believe him. Hmm. They still hmm. don't believe in him. And so knowing what he went through and him also imparting to me, for lack of a better word, what he had gone through. He was mocked. He was scourged. He, he went through, it was a terrible death for us and for our sins. Is he worth it? And I said, you know, he was speaking to me. I said, oh, yeah. I mean, I'm standing before the Lord. You are so worth it. I'm not. 
and I couldn't even believe. I really couldn't believe that I was there. Mm. I couldn't believe it. But I knew that I was born again, and that's why I was standing there, and I had a message. And uh, but the, the message was for the time to come, and it hadn't happened yet. And he'd shown me the things, and a lot of those things I wasn't quite ready for. To like God, God releases it in time. Like he seals the book, and then he's, he opens it. And, and he even told Ezekiel to take these things and seal them up until the time. And so in each time I ask the Lord, for, uh, as I'm walking in you know, life now, when, Lord, when? And I'm so blessed that he put you in my life at this time because the things that I hadn't shared before, you're going to have the ability to hear. Wow. One, of them, one of them being that we are in that time now. The time that he had said that was going to come and the things that he had shown me when I was with him and that people need to be prepared. And that was one of the things he said, and I, I shared before, that the things that he had shown me was to go back and, and to tell them that I love them and I'm coming soon. Mm. And many people say, well, soon. He's been saying that forever, right? And I can tell you, I don't think that we've come any closer to his soon return than where we're at right now with everything that's going on in the world and the things that we're seeing. And, you know, I have grandchildren and it's a totally different world for them, isn't it? Even for mm -hmm. yourself. Mm -hmm. and so these are things he said, there's, there's going to be things that they've never seen, the things that they've never heard are soon to come. And then, then I'll come. So, yeah. Wow. Um, I want to I want to come back to some more of the things that you saw as it relates mm -hmm. to the events to come. Uh, but I want to touch too uh, on the other part of what you mm -hmm. saw during your experience mm -hmm. with him, which was you had the chance to see him on the cross. So can you tell us what that was like? That that was a depiction as he was showing me that. Um, what he had done for us and why he had gone onto the cross. It was, it was as if uh, you would see the passion of Christ. Uh, you know, nothing like Hollywood, of course, and much worse, but, but it was the love that was poured out and that what he showed me was his love pouring out on all the earth. And uh, the, his love is an immeasurable, it's immeasurable. It's, it's beyond anything that we could ever imagine. And being in his presence here is because we have the ability to be with God once we become born again and in prayer. It's so, his love is what I saw, his love for the world and why he had come. Um, that's a real hard one to even talk about. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I can imagine that because on one hand you're seeing something, you know, absolutely brutal beyond, beyond words, how, how brutal that was. But on the other hand, you're experiencing the love. So that the, the immeasurable love that he has not only for you, but for the whole world and everyone that mm -hmm. has ever lived and will live. So that had to have been, uh, I mean, my goodness, what, what an experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and also the, in being there and seeing and him depicting that, you know, showing me those things uh, as like an, on a movie screen, so to say, um, knowing what he expects of us, you know, what he expected of me, will you lay your life down for another? Will you do that? Because when we have a lot of words as believers, you know, there's, um, and what with that, we say, oh, um, okay, so the word, pick up your cross and follow him, right? Lay down your life. No greater love than this is when one would lay down their life for a friend. So there's no greater love. Are, uh, will we, will we lay down our life? Will we, will we be willing to 
be ridiculed? Will we be willing to fight for what we believe when that time comes? And to see him hanging on the cross and, and everything that he went through, that depiction, there's a time of martyrdom. And we have brothers and sisters right now that are going through that and being persecuted. In America, we have not seen that. You know, we, a lot of people think they're being persecuted if somebody talks about them behind their back. Um, nay, no. Mm -mm. You know, and so he showed me and how we must be prepared. When we walk as Christ in as Christians to be prepared, are we ready? And I can I'll be honest with you, when he showed me, I like, oh God, I, I didn't fear for myself. I just couldn't believe what he had gone through for us. Mm. That much love, you know? Yeah, yeah. You, it, it's, it, you, you don't see that type of love shown today by, by many people. Well, first of all, obviously, mm -hmm. no one has the love that Jesus has for other people. Mm -hmm. But even just today, it just seems like people's hearts really, like it says in the Bible, people's hearts have gotten so cold. So even... Even I think even in the last 10, 15 years, there's a change there in, in people's hearts, the way that they treat people, that, especially people that, that may find themselves in disagreement on something. Um, I just think that more than ever, we're, we're finding, finding it hard to have any kind of common ground. And I think that uh, we really are like, it's very hard for us to forgive. And I think that people are thriving off of the, uh, the fleshly, feeling that you get when you uh, are not forgiving someone, because I do think that that mm -hmm. satisfies the flesh temporarily. Again, the, the feeling of anger maybe gives you a little bit of power and, mm -hmm. and uh, relief, but it's, it's temporary. And uh, as we know that that only, that's exactly what the enemy wants. He wants us to fight each other. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's really, it's just incredible to see how much it's changed even since mm -hmm. I was a kid in the nineties. It's just, it's a completely different world. It's kind of like we were talking about a little bit before we started recording. Um, so yeah, I'm sure that that was, that was quite mm -hmm. the contrast to be able to see that infinite love that only Jesus has. Mm -hmm. um, when you talk about the, the things that you saw, uh, the martyrdom, w w can you tell us exactly what it was that, that you had the, the chance to see? And then also, how did you see it? Was it just imparted into your mind? How did that work? Yeah, uh, it was it was imparted into my spirit, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, he said there will be catastrophic events and hopelessness. You know, people say, oh, catastrophic events. Okay, well, you know, there's earthquakes. We have those now. There's volcanoes. We have that now. Uh, we have tsunamis, things like that. Yes, that's true, but you've never seen the face of hopelessness. If you've never seen the face of hopelessness. When so you see the face of hopelessness, um, I can give, a, when, I, when I saw uh, recently the faces of mothers and uh, fathers there was a tsunami that had happened, I believe, in Japan, uh, one there. And then, oh, okay, for some that had, hadn't seen that, let's use, let's use 911 as an example. Uh, people running everywhere and not knowing what, where to run to and in shock and mothers losing their children. This is not anything that anybody wants to share. As a matter of fact, right now, I'm just um, yeah, hopelessness. There's nothing mm -hmm. that you can do. Like Rachel was crying out in the street for her children because they were no more. God weeps. He cries. And he sees how we hurt one another with no care, with no concern how things happen in this world. And he showed me this things happening in the world and people forget, they forget so quickly. Um, there's no mourning. Mourning is extremely important. Uh, if we don't mourn, we just kind of bottle it up. And that's how people's hearts grow cold is because they're not expressing what needs to uh, 
the Jewish people, they mourned for quite some time. They even, when, when he showed me Jesus himself on the cross and uh, those that were crying over him, that they wailed. You know, they had people that actually were hired to wail, hired mourners to get the others to mourn, to grieve, to tra travailing. And there's lack of that. And you know who the ones that are supposed to be mourning and travailing for those that are lost and, and babies uh, being murdered in the womb are the church. And he showed me this. Yeah, that I was it. That was it. I'll go ahead. I saw it all. Mm. I, I saw things like that and it's sad. Mm. Yeah, that was a big thing that uh, just listening to to your testimony and w with Tony on a minute to mm -hmm. midnight was uh, it sounds like the church really um, just taking a step back as it relates to a, babies being killed in the womb. Like you said, that's exactly what abortion is. And it sounds like, unfortunately, as we near the end, that that's only going to continue from what I can tell. Isn't that right? Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. He, wow. he showed me the rebellion of the people and the rebellion of the people. When, when you're standing in love and he shows you that how much hate there is and, you know, all you can say is, I'm one person, Lord, how can I change? How can I make a difference? You know, and we can make a difference by using our voice. And so when I was standing with him, he said, you tell them. And he was very, very uh, commanding. You tell them, you go and tell them. And when he said, you go and tell them that I love them, it was in a different tone. Um, when you said something about anger, if I can just reflect really quickly, the sure. Lord says, uh, be angry and sin not. There is a righteous anger. There is righteous judgment. And uh, even as a believer, a lot of we get a lot of um, judge not least you be judged. That's one of the one of the things that gets thrown out when you when you speak about the things that upset God and and make God angry. Uh, and one of them is the tearing of babies in the womb and. That you know, people don't want to hear that, but I know I can't change what I've seen and what he told me. I'm not going to, I'm not going to pull back my words because he told me to tell them. So with that, we should be angry. We should be angry at, at the things that are the injustice that's happening in the world right now. We should be angry that our children are not protected the way that they should be protected. And sadly, uh, you know, they're living in a world that that's falling apart around them, you know, and mm -hmm. we should be angry about how that happened. And God showed me it's the church's responsibility. Mm -hmm. I can't, I love the church. Oh, he loves the church. He loves his people. He loves, he loves so much. And so I have to, it's as if I have to make sure when people listen, because that, that they know that he has love too, but he is angry. He does get angry. He weeps. He has, we're made in a way that is as like God, you know, and when we become Christ like Christian, we're to also take on the attributes of God and his son. And because we're carrying his name. And if we don't, we're black, we're, Taking his name in vain. That's what taking the name of God in vain is, is saying I'm this way and walking like the devil. I did it. He showed me me. I, I'm, I can't say anything without first. He, he said, Elizabeth, look, because when I was in utter darkness, which was the second one, he showed me who I was. I was more, more revelation into who I was and what he saved me from than anything really. And then, then he he expanded on the other things of, that were going to happen in the world and 
the darkness that was going to come upon this earth, which is biblical. Everything lines up with the Bible. When I was with him the first time, I had I I was with Jesus and I was saying, I have to know that everything that you're telling me is in that Bible, is in in the word. Your word has to be in the word or this is another Jesus. Mm. I, and I didn't even know those things yet. You know, mind you, I was only a year. It was only a year and I was fresh and new and my eyes had been opened up. I grew up in Roman Catholicism and denounced um, some of the things that I'd learned because I wanted to know more and ended up uh, all over the place, all over the map and being tossed to and from in the world, which is um how I got there on Mother's Day morning saying, is this it? Is this all there is? I mean, I was happy. I had children, I had a husband, but I knew something was missing. And then I heard a still, I heard the voice of God say, you need the Holy Spirit. It was an amazing, amazing day for me. But to know that a year later, I didn't know the word. I, my Bible is right here. So when I say the word, or if I look over here, it's because I'm right here is, mm-hmm. is the word. And um, I said to him, if I don't see what you're saying right here, right in the word, uh, then I'm just going to dismiss it. I, it. You know that you know that you know that when you're standing in the presence of God, it's not a dream. It's not anesthesia. It's, you're not uh, like having an LSD trip or something. I've never LSD tripped, but that's what people say. Oh, it's like, a, oh, you probably had some kind of euphoria. No, 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 yeah, no. And I appreciate you bringing that up too, as, as it relates to the anger. You're hundred percent right. We should be angry, especially like you said, the church as it relates to the, mm-hmm. these topics here. And um, I think just in general, what, uh, what's going on, I think just reminds me, uh, uh, like I think we had mentioned before that just, men's hearts growing cold and mm-hmm. just a divisiveness that I don't think that we've ever seen, especially here in this country, in the United States. And I do mm-hmm. think that that's telling that we are headed uh, for a place towards a place in this country that we've never been before. Well, I, I guess outside of the civil war, but I th- just something about with everything r- lining up the way that it, it talks about things in revelation certainly th- makes it seem like you said, we're closer than we've ever been mm-hmm. to mm-hmm. Um, many of the things that you saw during your experience here uh, with Jesus. And, Another thing I wanted to highlight, uh, which I, I want to do this because it showcases the the power of prayer. And you had a chance to actually see people's mm-hmm. prayers. So mm-hmm. can you tell us what, what was that like? Magnificent. It was beautiful. I wanted to know what it was because I didn't know what it was. Uh, so when I was there, I looked and he said to me, do you see that? And what I saw was uh, like a, almost like a screen, uh, a bit like beautiful, um, like pixels that sparkled and pixelated. And I looked and I said, he said, he moved his arm. Okay. I have to tell everything sure. I do. Okay. So he moved his arm and when he moved his arm, it was like the whole atmosphere, uh, she just went with him. Everything, everything praises him. Everything glorifies him. They, everything magnifies him. Uh, everything worships him. Everything that's on him, his garments, praise him, sing to him. Uh, it is so beautiful. It is. He is so beautiful. And so he moved his arm. And a lot of people say, "Did you see his hand? Did you see the? You know? Did you see the wounds?" No, I didn't. Uh, but I did see the movement. I, I did see his his hand, but it's it was um, like having something sheer over that that sparkled and and light, all light. Everything is light. So he moved his hand, and it was like w- water being parted. And then he pointed, and when he pointed, I saw that screen, that pixelated screen. And it was my lady friend, Caroline, who had come to the hospital with my husband. And she was, I saw from her, her, just from her torso, her here up, and she was with her head bowed and her hands clasped and she was in prayer. And he said, do you see her? And I said, yes, that's my friend Caroline. And he said, she's praying for you right now. And I 
saw her prayers go up with other prayers that were going up from other people all over the all over the world. Wow. And as they went up, it was now, mind you, I didn't know this scripture verse about the incense, like prayer going up to the throne room of God, like incense. I yeah. didn't. I and so I saw Dan like you don't have words. So for lack of words, like musical notes per se, wow. going up and and up and up, and I just I don't even have words for it. it was so beautiful, and I said, "What is that, Lord? What what is that? It's so beautiful." And it was as if I saw. Uh, if the heavens were to part, like if the sky, the blue of the sky were to part and you would see, you can, I can't even say it because our blue and our sky does not part. Our clouds do, you know, the clouds will part and then the sun will come through the clouds. But this was the blue of the heavens parting. Wow. It was amazing. Wow. And the, the prayers, like like little musical notes, in fact, I don't have the words, went up and I said, this is so beautiful what you're showing me, Lord. What is it? Now, what I also saw, but I don't have a visual of, I just have a, a in the spirit. And I believe that the reason why is because so many people worship angels. They do. Mm-hmm. And so they want to know the, and how I knew this and why I didn't see, like the Lord didn't have me remember what they looked like, but know that they are, what, what it was, were beings that were more beautiful, you know, that he created. And I was like, well, why, why don't I really remember what they look like? And then he had taken me to share my testimony somewhere and people wanted to hear the testimony and as I was there speaking on a speaking and the people said, well, what did the angels look like? And out of my mouth said, why do you want to know what the angels look like? I stood before the Lord of Lords and the King of Kings. Mm. Right. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. So as I, uh, as I was watching, I said, what are those? What is that Lord? And he said, those are the prayers of my intercessors. Mm. I said, that is so beautiful. Mm. And it was as if, as the prayers went up to the throne room of God, it was praise and worship to him. It was magnificent. And I heard them too. I heard, I heard as, as, uh, if I didn't say that with Tony, I don't know. I did say it. I did have it in a, I shared quite a few times now. Thank you, Lord. But, uh, it was like music that you, from the heavens that, that you can't even describe. That's worship. When when people pray and it's a heartfelt prayer, I mean, like really, we can have okay, thank you, Lord, for our food, Amen. You know, and there's nothing wrong with that either. It's the heart, it's the heart, and our when our spirit is spirit, spirit with God, and our heart is um, speaking to God. It's amazing, mm -hmm. and so it's beautiful. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Thank, thank you for sharing that because a lot of times on this show, we highlight the other side, unfortunately, because that's people, a lot of people's testimonies are people that have come out of the new age or which is, you know, Luciferian essentially. And, mm -hmm. um, we, mm -hmm. we talk so much about the spells and, uh, you know, the things that do have some power on the, on the side of the enemy. If there's some power there on the side of the enemy through those types of, me you know, methods of communicating with the spirit realms, such as through spells, mm -hmm. etc. how much more powerful is the the authentic method of god the pure method of of interacting with him through prayer and the fact that you had a visual uh, a, a visual component to everything and mm -hmm. uh is is incredible in, in and of itself but um even just like the the like you said it's almost like worship prayer is like war it really is worship to the same to the same degree like worship the, the way that you would worship during music or you know worship songs and that heartfelt mm -hmm that pure heart that you, that you have during those moments. Um, it really, like you said, it's like the incense going up to, to God and just the overlap there, I think it's mm -hmm. just so powerful and, and, and just really highlights how much he appreciates that in the relationship that we have with him. I think it all comes back to that relationship. Mm -hmm. 
yeah, he had spoken to me. He said, my, when he said, those are the, my, the prayers of my intercessors, uh, we're all to intercede. We're all to mm-hmm. pray. We're all to pray for the things that we see, not just talk about it, but pray about it. And um, that my true worshipers worship me in spirit and in truth. And he showed me it's not about going someplace in the natural is about going somewhere in the spirit. We are spiritual. We are spiritual beings. We are supernatural beings. And a lot of people, they're like, "Uh oh, there she goes with the word supernatural. God is supernatural. You know, we don't have the words. We lack the words for God. We really do. And so he made us. We we have been given power over the enemy. We just say the words that are in the word. It's, it's not going to have the same effect as having the power that comes from the word. And that power is with the Holy Spirit. I saw the power. I saw the love. I saw the incredible ability to part the heavens by prayer. That's amazing. Absolutely incredible. That we can petition God, that we're petitioning God. Mm. It's beautiful. So, so you had that ex- that experience there with the prayer. Was how did how did that first experience wrap up? Did you have any final words with Jesus, or did it just kind of end and you were back there in in the hospital? What happened there? You know, he told me that I had to come back. You know, because you don't want to. You don't. You don't think about your family, and then. The moment that he said I had to come back and tell them that he that he loves them and he's coming soon, and in between the he I tell them I love them and I'm coming soon, there was also shown to me what we what I and so it's, it's with me first and then I share with others you know without pointing a finger at all uh, that in between the I love tell them I love them. There's also a reciprocation of love. And when we say that we love God, what are we, what is, how does he know? How does he know? Cause I said, I want, you know, God, I want you to know how much I love you. And he said, keep my commands. Hmm. A lot of people say, well, that, you know, we can't keep his commands. We can certainly do everything in our, in, in the power of God the Holy Spirit through us to do so not on our own. Can we No. And so, you know, when I'm with, when I was with him, I didn't think I was anybody, but me, I didn't think that I, and I still don't think that I'm anybody majorly special. I sit here and go, how, how come me, God, how come me? And I think because at one time between that time that I gave and submitted my life to the Lord and the time that I was with him, I said, here I am, Lord, use me. Mm. Wow. This is it. Yeah. So to answer your question, um, the the most prominent out of the beautiful experience that I would just like, you know, if I can go word from word verbatim, you know, to every everything that I'd seen, I, we wouldn't even have enough time, brother, you know, even... Mm. It, it wouldn't be an hour interview. Um, the part where he said to, that there'll be catastrophic events and hopelessness is the one, the one thing that sticks out as well as tell them I love them and I'm coming soon. So I can't take and eliminate the I'm coming soon and what must happen before his return. I can't eliminate I'm coming soon because a lot of people will they'll say, well, I want him to come. Oh, I wish he would hurry and come. And he even says, you don't know what you ask for. Even when, when we're in church, people in church, you know, when we're in our, in our congregations and we say, give me more of your glory, Lord. Give me more of your glory. His glory is we, we couldn't even stand. Because even when I was in his glory, my, I, I, I felt as if I was standing yet kneeling. It's, it's, 
it's an experience I can't explain. I knew that I wanted to be at his feet forever. Mm. So in that same sense, we, um, we need to be prepared. Mm. That's it right there. The word is prepare, prepare what your soul for his coming. Mm. Mm. Not, you know, just saying that I go to church on Sunday and I'm a Christian doesn't blink you in. I, I don't know. I don't, I still to this day don't feel like I was worthy to have been from here to light, you know, from here in this realm to, a, to, to standing with him. Mm. And how was I able to do that? I became, I was born again, born again, how born again to the spirit of God, mm. not just, you know, not just sprinkled with water, not just saying a prayer, but saying, I'm going to do everything with the power that you've given me through Holy, the Holy Spirit to obey what your commands say. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I, I appreciate you bringing up the idea that many people don't know what they ask for because it's true. Even, even in this context, when you, when you, you know, you are myself, even, I think that many people wish that they had a, you know, a certain, a, a certain platform that they had an experience like mm. yours. Well, it certainly, it, it comes with a price. Uh, it's mm. not, it's not an easy message as, as he started your in, experience with him with, he stated that they will, they, they will persecute persecute you essentially and even if it's not you know physically uh, mm -hmm. it, it's it's not the most comfortable thing especially in 2021 uh you know the western world to preach the truth as is found in the word of god uh, a lot of people don't like it um it certainly comes with a price but i think that's why he he chooses people such as yourself because he knows that you are going to carry through with spreading the truth and he sees your heart he sees he sees how you're going to take that information and and uh, run with it so um, I just, I'm so thankful that you did that. And, uh, I, I, I know that you'll, I know you've already helped out a ton of people by sharing your testimony. And I know that you will only continue to do so. So I'm so appreciative of that. Mm -hmm. Well, that is it for this week's episode, everybody. Thank you so much for tuning in. Um, you can reach Elizabeth at her email. She was kind enough to include her email and I will, as I always do, include that in the description below. It's just an heir to his throne with the number two at AOL.com an heir to his throne at AOL.com. You can also find Elizabeth on Facebook, just Elizabeth Nebenfer. And again, I will have that link uh, below wherever you're listening to this. Um, also, uh, if you have not yet uh, taken the opportunity to ask God to reveal himself to you and establish a, rela a relationship with God yourself, I want to give you the opportunity to do that right now. Um, and so if you would just please ask God either by prayer or out loud, whatever is more comfortable for you, uh, to reveal himself to you in a personal way. Um, if you do this over a period of time, uh, I think that you're going to be really pleased with the results. And um, I, I don't mention this enough, but um, if you haven't cracked open a Bible yet in a while, I would recommend you do that as well. I think a lot of times when we're doing our spiritual searching, we don't have a Christian background. I think that that sometimes uh, can be the last resort that we that we go to opening up a Bible. Uh, but if I, I would encourage you to do that again if you haven't done it for a while. And um, I think that you'll really be pleased with, with what you find there. Um, also, uh, just a reminder, to, a reminder to send in your testimony to spiritanswerspodcast at gmail.com. Your new age to Jesus testimony, near-death experience, healing, miracle encounter, whatever that may be. I would love to hear from you. I will see you next week in part two. Have a great week. I'll be praying for you. Take care.